I'm going to try and survive the next 100 days in Ark Survival Evolves most epic mod, Ark Pugnacia. Here in Ark Pugnacia, you get to hang out with some of the coolest creatures, like this AR carrying hipster, or how about chilling in the shade with this snazzy trike. But don't be fooled by their appearance, things can take a turn when you start messing with them. As for the ultimate challenge, an evil manifestation is relentlessly attempting to break free, and it's my mission to eliminate the threat it possesses. There I was, trying to set up shop and get some gear going, when out of nowhere I was rudely interrupted by some oversized bird brain. What the freak? I guess I might have given it a strange look or something, because the next thing I knew, I was being summoned to meet its creator. Having declined the job interview, I was sent back with strict instructions to never make eye contact with those ninja dodos again. Keeping that in mind, I continued once again with whipping up some gear to protect myself. I pretty much didn't really take my surroundings into consideration. What? Because, oh my... Yeah, I was once again summoned by the creator. Third time's the charm, I suppose. This time, I managed to spawn in a somewhat safer area. There's these crazy dinos all over the show. I also noticed that I had a good set of tools on me. With those, I was able to farm up some resources for a set of cloth armor and got myself a spear. Armed with the basics, I ventured out to explore the area to see what it had to offer and find out if there were any imminent threats I needed to watch out for. Fortunately, things weren't too hectic, except for a group of menacing compies. Man, did I try my best to get rid of them? But no matter how many spears I threw at these darned compies, it seemed to have no effect on them. The only option I had left was to run, and run I did! Anyways, it was getting kinda dark and I needed a place to camp for the night. So, I scavenged around for the bits and bobs that I needed to put up together a few structures and built myself a little thatch shack to call home for the next few days. Starting day 2 bright and early, my goal was to level up by hunting down some of the creatures nearby. I began by crafting a bow and a few arrows, then set out for my first target, a turtle. I peppered the carbon enemies with a few arrows to assess the damage I was dealing. However, I quickly realized that my bow and arrows lacked the power to take it down. So, I decided to bail, hoping the creature would calm down, giving me a chance to potentially try and taming it. As I was fleeing from the turtle, I had completely forgotten about the group of compies that were in the area and well we crossed paths again. Sadly my bow and arrows were still ineffective against the dinos of Pugnacia so I had to run yet again. The thing is while running away from those compies I stumbled upon an amazing find rare flowers and crystals. It then crossed my mind that I could actually craft a spyglass. Now that would come in handy, but I needed hide. How the heck was I supposed to get that? My best hope for obtaining hide was to attempt to take down one of those compies. I focused on gathering a bunch of resources to craft some arrows and, equipped with the gear I needed, I moved on to single out one of those compies. Managing to kite one away from its group, I began my assault. I started with arrows but soon switched to my spears as they seemed to do slightly better damage. It felt like it went on forever as I threw countless spears at it. It seemed like it barely made a dent in the compies. His HP. Right then, I had no other option but to retreat to safety while I still had the chance. I then shifted my attention to taming the turtle that I had tried to take down earlier. Luckily, this was a passive tame and all it needed was some berries. Also, the time between feeding wasn't that long either. It was just the break I needed. Lo and behold, after a few minutes, I had successfully tamed the carbon emmys. I named it Jax as it was the first name that popped into my head and I was able to grab a few of those soul balls too. Later on day 2, during my adventures to acquire hide, I came across a bulb dog. I thought it would be the perfect dino I needed for this quest, but first I had to check out a nearby white drop. Unfortunately, well, as for the white drop, that was quite underwhelming. Anyways, it was time to take care of that bulb dog. I whipped out my spear and launched an attack. It took for eternity to bring this thing down. I mean, I thought something was wrong with the stats, that's how insane it was. After some time, 
had passed, I had eventually managed to defeat the Bob Dog and got a measly portion of hide and some meat. I mean, all that effort for such a small reward, it was just crazy. I began day 3 with a mad dash, determined to farm more hide with my trusty sidekick Jax. My plan was to have Jax attack the dinos while I used my bowlers to immobilize them. And what do you know? It actually works, like a charm. With progress finally being made on retrieving hide, I moved on to find my next target. As I was doing so, I stumbled upon a trike and got excited at the prospect of taming it. Although, I'm not entirely sure why there were two slingshots that I could craft, but um, yeah, anyways. However, I was one level shy of taming that trike. It was decided then I needed to move on to find more dinos to challenge for battles of ultimate supremacy. Uh, yeah, something like that. We charmed on some more compies, found a few glow pets that were gigantic, which probably meant we could ride them, but I was dehydrating and needed water fast. Thing is, it was all the way on the other side of this mountaintop. Oh uh, yeah, if not for that darn load shedding nonsense, I probably would have enough time to tame one of those light pets. The problem is, I had only 4 minutes in real life of electricity and like, I didn't want to Chanted. Determined to farm more hide and meat, I embraced the new day which brought in a multitude of new spawns in the area. An excellent opportunity for me to go hunting with my trusty companion Jax. I then spotted a cute little shinehorn. Unfortunately for him, it seemed to be an easy target. I trapped it with my bowler and sent in Jax to attack. I must say, I underestimated this shinehorn as it too turned out to have quite an amount of HP. To my surprise, the shinehorn managed to escape but I refused to give up and eventually found it again. Sadly it wasn't meant to be as the little creature went bouncing off a cliff with Jax almost following suit. Yep, I tried taking out another light pet and well it just didn't seem like it was going to work. The quest for hide and meat continued. After searching for creatures to attack, an opportunity presented itself. I was being hunted by a pig of mastics. I equipped my boulders and trapped the little bugger, then launched a barrage of spears to take it down. Realizing that this wasn't enough, I summoned in the mighty Jax to join forces in a tag team battle against the pig of mastics. After a few intense minutes, we finally destroyed the pig and gained a few more pieces of hide. But just then, I decided to take on one of those jug bugs. Oh boy, did that just turn my world upside down? I didn't know those things were so OP. What? Ha, the freak! <laughs> oh no. I didn't place a bit. I'm pretty much screwed now. However, where there is despair, there is hope. You see, I found a trike nearby and I was at the level where I could tame it. So, I spent the night collecting the berries that it needed to be tamed. While I carry on with my berry picking duty, here's the lowdown on today's sponsor. Introducing today's sponsor, Goat Games, bringing you the latest addition to the beloved hack and slash franchise, Dungeon Hunter 6. In Dungeon Hunter 6, you're not just defeating bosses, you're making them serve you, looting with you, riding with you, and even being able to fly those menacing beasts. And here's the twist, you can summon up to 3 bosses onto the battlefield, they'll be your loyal squad members, following you everywhere and performing incredible combo skills. And the best part, you can even shapeshift into them for ultimate power, with a roster of over 100 unique bosses to conquer, and new classes and units arriving monthly, the possibilities are endless. Dungeon Hunter 6 is packed with creative gameplay elements. Ever wanted to be a stealthy cat on a mission? Well, you we can do that here. And don't forget the customizable mounts, ride fantastical creatures and machines when you meet other players. This game raises the bar for 3D graphics on mobile. The stunning skill animations tailored for multicasting ensures the smoothest mobile device experience. There's no stopping there. Join forces with your guildmates, battle in real-time guild wars and explore the variety of skill trees options to test 
boost your bills, plus trade items through the auction system and unlock a whole new level of strategy. Download Dungeon Hunter 6 now for free on both Android and iOS. Plus, as a treat, when you use my link below or scan the QR code, you'll receive an exclusive starter pack worth $50 available for the next 30 days, including 10 summoning scrolls, 1 SSR Lieutenant Demonic Wolf and 1 accessory pack. Oh, but wait, there's more. Use your game account to enter the launch Lucky Spin event for free to win great prizes like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, PS5 and more starting October 15th. After spending most of the night gathering as many berries as I could, I set out early on day 5 with the intention of taming the trike. Thankfully, there was no immediate threat around this time, and taming passive dinos was actually not that bad when it came to the wait between feeding times. So after a few minutes, I finally managed to tame the trike and named him Tyson. Yo, these things messing me up here. What's wrong with these stats, bro? It's driving my brains... It's definitely 73k. No. Freak! <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Well, can you show me some of the magic there? Take care of that, buddy, for me, please. Oh, Freak, you're doing K1, K3, K damage. 1k damage, and you still. Hey, yo, let's go. Let's go. With this newfound beast, I set out to farm up some of the materials needed to craft Tyson's saddle. But first, I had to get a spyglass to help me better understand the dinos I was dealing with. Luckily, this map had tons of crystals all over the land, so finding some wasn't that difficult. I was then able to craft the awesome spyglass and a few of the other items to help me out. From there, it was on to farming some of the creatures that were nearby. We took on a sweet little shine horn and moved on some bigger prey, the parasaur. Now that would surely give us what we were searching for. Oh, look at this. Come on. Juicy sarco meat. It's beauty. Can you collect it? Yes, you can. It's time for payback, Sonny. Come on. There's dillos. Ooh. Oh, whoa! Wait. You can, like, stone? This is amazing. After surviving the night, thanks to big old Tyson here, I was gifted with another companion. And that came in form of a vulture. A prodigious vulture, might I add. The cool thing about these is that I could ride them without the need for a saddle. So you bet! I had to tame this little birdie, and luckily it just needed a few pieces of spoiled meat, which I had. And within a few bites, Vince the vulture was added to the tribe. Now that I had Vince at my disposal, it was the perfect opportunity to find my way back to base. Fortunately, I had somewhat of an idea where my starter base was. And what do you know? My instincts were right on the mark. I had found my base. Even better news, I decided to return to the previous spot where the jug bug had wrecked me. And would you believe it? Standing there untouched was Jax the turtle himself, along with all of my loot. It was just crazy. Back at base, I went ahead and placed down the bed that I had previously forgotten about and threw in a tombstone, just in case I had an unfortunate event. On day 7, I took Tyson with me to gather resources as I planned to upgrade my base from thatch tier to stone. Back at base, I started crafting the required structures and continued farming wood and thatch to build more stone structures. From there, I started placing the structures I had managed to craft and attempted to create a base that would serve as a home for the foreseeable future. However, I realized I needed more structures and had other ideas for a more aesthetically pleasing base. And so the task of base building spilled over onto day 8. That meant more farming, more crafting and more structure placement. I must be entirely truthful here. I didn't really have a plan in mind. I just knew I had to build a base and make it somewhat visually appealing. 
It was day 9 and I had finally completed building my starter base. It was a double story structure, finished off with a few wooden elements and it came with its very own balcony that overlooks the most breathtaking view. I also crafted some windows to let in natural light and at the top level of my base had the area that served as a pen for all my dinos. The bottom area was where I kept all of my crafting stations and storage containers. My next task was to craft some of the crafting stations that were needed for me to progress. I set off to farm for the materials required and back at base I was able to cook up a smithy, the pugnacious smithy and an upgrade station as well. At the same time I was able to get myself a metal pick which I then upgraded in my upgrade station. And to finish things off, I decided to go out for a little metal run with my new gear and made sure not to mess around with those pain in the butt brantos. I presume things would get a whole lot more complicated if I had mistakenly brushed them the wrong way. On day 10, I decided to try and tame another trike. I set off with Tyson in search of a female companion for him. Not far from base, I came across a female trike and decided this would do just fine. So, I began the taming process process by feeding her kibble, followed by berries to maintain the taming process. I had to be cautious though, as there were other dangerous dinos nearby, and I didn't want to attract their attention. As soon as I was able to tame the trike, I quickly placed her in a soul ball and made a beeline back to my dino for safety. While returning to base, I once again noticed the glacial carbon emmy from a few days before and became interested in testing out the torpor damage that those pugnacia tracks could do. The glacial carbon emmys responded by blasting me with its frost breath. Jeez, I wasn't expecting that. However, the torpor damage wasn't even that great too. So, I decided not to mess around with the feisty little turtle and hightailed it out of there faster than a sloth on roller skates. Back at base, I went ahead with breeding my trikes for a few good backup dinos. On day 11, I began by attempting to hatch the eggs I got from breeding my tracks the previous day. I then went ahead to place a few standing torches to help with the process, but it turned out that I didn't really need them. The eggs could incubate perfectly just by being indoors. Even better news, I was able to acquire 3 new additions to the squad, and the best part is, they had pretty decent stats too. Following that, I proceeded to gather some metal, because I needed the ingots to craft a few items back at base. Specifically, I required the materials to craft a feeding trough for my dinos. Here we go. And I also crafted a crossbow, which I was able to upgrade in my upgrade station. Then, I prepared myself for a little taming expedition. I've got a glacial carbon emmys. That's what I'm hoping. You need to just chill, buddy. Hey, yo! What? 9k on that bad boy! Yes! Oh my freaking soul, that is awesome. Knocked out, son. There we go! After knocking out the turtle, I went back to base to grab some berries and cooked up a grill and tonic. Then returned to the carbonemis to feed it the juicy goodies. Jeez, was this a long wait? The carbonemis finally tamed up on day 12. From there, I went to check up on my trikes. And at the same time, I got a saddle for the latest turtle tame and took that out for a little test drive. Although, I wasn't quite confident that this carbon emmys could do much damage. This little fella was probably going to be used for its food preserving capability. Anyways, I took out the best of the trikes and went on a rampage, trying to take out as many dinos as I could to rack up all of those juicy levels. What the freak? He's got his HP back. Now we got two trikes on us. Okay, we got one down. Two down. How did this trike get its H? Well, I mean, Bronto, sorry. Uh, there we go, 10k, almost time to go now, buddy. Hey, yo, let's go. Also, while we were out and about, I spotted a Primal Kakunas taking on two other trikes, and I thought this might just be a good opportunity to join in on the fun. What's up, buddy? What's up? I'm here to tango. Ooh. 
Ooh, 2k8. Oh, oh. We're getting smashed by trikes here. Here. This is... <laughs> I'm concentrating on this primal cock in us. We're gonna take it down soon. We're gonna take it down. Oh! Oh! Let's go! The next day, I set off a day of taming. My goal was to try and tame a few special dinos with some unique abilities. Like the Conflagrant Dodo, which I believe was the same dino that wasted me on day one. Apparently, it could poop out gasoline. Yeah, that definitely sounds a bit weird, but that would surely come in handy. Also, somehow, I was able to get some cool loot and a chippy hammerhead that I named Maximus. While out on my journey, I came across a decent level dodo and prepared to tame it using my bowlers and pugnacia trank arrows. After trapping the dodo with the bowler, I switched to the crossbow and proceeded to knock it out. Then I summoned in Trixie the trike to harvest some berries for the dodo. While I was doing so, I spotted a glacial iguanodon. This one had an even crazier ability. It could convert seeds into fruits, not the other way around that most of us I used to. Of course, I just had to get this puppy. But first, I had to feed the dodos the berry that I had just collected. Once the dodo was taken care of, I turned my attention towards the glacial iguanodon. From the back of my trike, I sent forth a bowler to see if I could actually trap the iguanodon with it. And what do you know? It worked! From there, I just had to trank the bugger until it was knocked out and, well, needed to get it one of those special tonics. Back at base, I grabbed the grill and tonic, some berries from our bio fridge and made my way back to the iguanodon to finalize the tame. My goal was to finish my base with a few more of those special crafting stations, a butcher's table, the S plus crafting station and I was hoping to get the fabricator at the same time. However, I needed more resources, specifically cementing paste. So off I went in search of that glorious super sticky substance. While flying around looking for cementing paste, I spotted a promising purple drop. I just had to check it out. However, there was a spino guarding the drop. I then quickly summoned in Trixie and charged in for a surprise attack. Wait! That's doing major damage. Holy smokes! That was crazy. Later on, I came across exactly what I was looking for, a beaver dam. I sneaked up to it ever so cautiously and grabbed its contents, luckily finding some cementing paste as well. But I needed more and that darn beaver was in my way. I had to get rid of it. Just as I was trying to take it out, I noticed in its description that it could generate beaver dams. What the actual freak? I had to change my strategy here. I had to tame one of these beavers. Unfortunately, this one was already aggroed, so I had to leave the area for it to calm down. However, just over the next hill, I found another beaver that I could tame. I cleared the area of any nearby threats and proceeded to tame the Castoroides. Considering I plan to tame more dinos, I needed kibble to speed up the process. To do that, I would need to get some crops up and running. I proceeded to craft a few S plus crop plots and place them around the balcony area. Then I worked on setting up a watering system for my crops. Right, we should be good to go, man. Good to go. Oh, the freak. Alrighty, we got one of that. And uh, yeah, perfect. How would I? Oh my! We can go. Boom. Uh, all right. So, where would you like to put the piping? There we go. We've got water running. All I had to do from there was to figure out how to obtain fertilizer. So I set off once again in search of a dino that could generate fertilizer. While I was out and about, I came across a few Fiomias and they would surely help. However, they were quite high leveled and I was pretty far from the base. I could tell this was going to be a long night. 
Anyways, I had no better options. So, I decided to proceed with taming the Fiomia. I used the bowler and then tranquilized the little porkster until it was unconscious. Even though I wasn't supposed to do that, as it was a passive tame. What a screep. Interestingly, while gathering berries for it, I stumbled upon something that would help me with my kibble situation. A conflagrant Morella Tops. Oh, you bet. I just had to have it. I grabbed my crossbow and started tranking the Morella Tops until it was knocked out. I fed it the required berries and waited for it to tame up. Day 16. I decided to grab one of those ghrelin tonics from the base for the Morella Tops because it was taking forever to tame. On my way back to the dino, I came across a red drop with some sweet juicy loot. The compound bows caught my eye and I thought they'd pair well with the Pugnacia tranks for taming. Back at the Morella Tops, I fed it the tonic and waited for it to tame. While waiting, I decided to look for an Ovi Raptor or an Easter Bunny to test out their automated kibble ability. Fortunately, just over the next mountain, I spotted an Ovi Raptor that I could tame. But first, I needed to clear the area of the dangerous creatures and at the same time gather some prime meat to feed the Ovi Raptor. However, when I attempted to tame the Ovi Raptor, it just disappeared and ended up miles away in a dangerous area. I didn't want to risk it, so I decided to bail and search for another Ovi Raptor to tame. Later on, day 16, I had a much better experience taming another Ovi Raptor. This one was of a lower level, which made for a quicker tame. Alrighty, on day 17, I set out to tame the last piece of the puzzle, the Easter Bunny. To do that, I needed some rare mushrooms, and the best way I knew to get them was by raiding some of the beaver dams. I flew over to the beaver dams on my way to the desert, and thankfully, they provided me with just enough rare mushrooms to tame a decent level Easter Bunny. Over at the desert biome, I proceeded to search for the creature I wanted, making sure to clear out the area of all dangerous threats. Once I was certain the area was clear, I moved in with a bowler in hand to tame the Easter Bunny I had located. I trapped the bunny with the bowler and used the compound bow to knock it out. It went down quickly and was completely knocked out cold. Afterward, I fed it the ghrelin tonic and the juicy mushrooms. However, it still took a while to tame, so I had to stick around for a bit, but eventually I was able to get my very own Easter Bunny. Oh, and I can't forget that on my way back to base, I spotted another red trap, and this one was full to the teeth with all those goodies. So, on day 18, I had all the requirements for the automated kibble system and I decided to have a go at setting it up. I had my Ovi wrapped on Wanda, well, as for the bunny and Morello tops, there was not much that could be done. I guess I just needed to wait a while. Anyways, I needed to work on a few things back at base. However, to do that, I had to go out and gather some resources. I decided to collect some organic polymer from a Carcinus, and the chainsaw I had acquired from the red drop previously turned out to be an excellent gathering tool. With it, I was able to obtain a crazy amount of polymer and chitin from just a single crab. Back at base, I proceeded to craft a fabricator went out to mine some metal and then loaded it into the forges. I also crafted a soul gun and a soul terminal and I was finally able to get a teleporter going but I still needed the remotes so it was of no use to me for now. It was an early morning start to the day as I went to prepare for my next big tame. With Trixie the trike I gathered all the berries I needed to top up my taming gear. Then, I set off in search of a high-level Spino. After scouting several prospective Spinos, I finally found two that were exceptionally high-level. There was an X-Variant and a Conflagrant version. Not only did the Conflagrant Spino have a special ability, but it also came with its very own saddle. I thought that was quite neat. 
I decided to use a ledge to my advantage to tame the X variant since it had better stats. I drew my crossbow and tried to get the attention of the X Spino. However, it seemed to be too far away for me to get a shot on it. So, I went with the conflagrant option. I got its attention by shooting it with the stone arrows and once it was aggroed onto me, I swapped out my crossbow for the compound bow and began tracking the Spino until it was knocked out. The challenge was that I needed prime meat to tame the Stano. And for some weird reason, prime meat was hard to come by. For the rest of the day, I spent my time trying to hunt down as many dinos as I could to gather the amount of prime meat needed to tame the conflagrant Spino. Finally, on day 20, I had gathered enough prime meat to actually tame the conflagrant Spino. Once it was tamed, oh boy, did we go on a joy ride? This thing was incredibly overpowered. It absolutely smashed everything in sight and dealt an insane amount of damage. I was left speechless. It was also quite challenging to control in water due to its super fast speed. I even decimated a couple of primal carcinos in seconds with this beauty. It was so satisfying to have something this powerful. I then decided it would be best to go around and jump on all the dinos in sight to gain as many levels as possible for both the Spino and my character. Oh, and I believe I was pretty much set when it came to collecting primal hide for any reason, don't you think? Day 21. I decided to go in search of a female conflagrant spino. I thought it would be best to start breeding for spares and possibly obtain an even stronger tame. I set out to all the known spino spawns and tracked down a decent level female. I then cleared the area of all the nasties and positioned myself on top of a ledge. It was the safest way to avoid getting annihilated by this beast. From there, I attempted to get the attention of the spino by shooting it with some stone arrows. Arrows. Once I had its attention, I swapped the crossbow for my taming gear and began tranking the Spino. Within a couple of shots with the Pugnacia tranks, this beauty was knocked out and fast asleep like a little baby Spino. Aww. Realizing I didn't have much prime meat on me, I decided to head back to base to grab some. While on my way, I spotted something interesting. A wisp. So, I tamed that too, just to see what it could do. Back at base, I collected the prime meat and made my way to the unconscious Spino to feed it, then waited for it to tame up. Now that I had the mating pair of conflagrant Spinos, on day 22, I pretty much spent this time breeding them for some good eggs. Later that day, I went ahead with hatching the eggs that popped out of those Spinos and I did manage to get a few decent levels from them. Although, it wasn't anything too serious, I just needed backups, just in case. Alrighty, it was time to level up this mighty beast, so I took I Don't Bite for a massive jumping spree. He was just destroying everything in sight and it was doing crazy amounts of damage as well. Might I add, this was even before I could put in any any of the levels that we gained. However, while we were out and about doing our business, we spotted this. Holy cow. What the freak is this? Oh snap. Okay, never mind. We can't do this. Let's get out of here. Come on. Come on! Oh! No! no. We've lost in water! Let's get out of here! Oh jeez! It's coming after me! <laughs> no! Oh, I shouldn't have... Oh my goodness! We need to get in water! Yes, yes, we do! Wait! Wait, we were doing damage to it! What's going on then? Yeah, we were doing damage to it. That was another one. Let's go, Sid! Hey, yo! Let's go! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, Tiger. Easy. Wee -wee. Oh, snap. Look at that. Caprisuka seahorse. That wasn't too crazy. Oh, 
Ooh. Man, that looks freaking amazing. But I think just for funsies, maybe we should go and take out the other sock of whatever it is. TikTok. There we go. TikTok, you're mine. It's going down pretty nice. Last two. Hey, yo. Let's go. See ya. Well, done with the fun stuff for the day. I went in search of some pearls and found a good spot to farm up those much needed resources. While searching for pearls the previous day, I spotted something really interesting that I wanted to take a closer look at and maybe even tame the creature. Yep, I'm talking about this beauty, the Conflagrant Maywing. The cool thing about this creature is that it can be used as a generator, a wireless generator to be more specific. This was absolutely amazing, I just had to have it. However, the Maywing wasn't in a good spot and there were some nasties in the area. I quickly summoned I don't bite and went in to take care of the problem, smashing everything that would interfere with the tame and making sure that the Maywing was unharmed. Once the area was cleared, I focused my attention on the conflagrant Maywing and drew my taming gear. I then proceeded to knock it unconscious, which was rather quick as it had low torpor, oddly enough. Then I went ahead to get it some prime meat and sadly one of my targets was a baby rex. Unfortunately it just had to be done. I was in need of prime meat. Oh look at that. Beauty. Prime meat jackpot. Holy cow. I definitely can't take that. That's green mullet. I don't think we'll be able to take that out. Not at the moment. I don't feel confident. Okay so... You need only 19 raw prime meats. Oh, we got plenty. I'll give you some extra too. How's that? Back at base on day 25 with my newly tamed Maywing, I decided to see what it could actually do. Man, that's quite huge. That's our whole base here. It's quite huge. Do you have some levels on you? Um, does it go instant, eh? Well, I guess we missed that. But anyways, it's there. Does it actually work? We can, We only have this. Oh, nice. Look there. It's powered. We've got a conflagrant Maywing. And we have some beaver dams from our castoroides. Awesome. I had also forgotten that the upgrade station could salvage items from my unwanted loot. I mean, that would really help me obtain some of the more hard to get resources quite easily. So I took what I didn't need and scrapped them for some of those juicy resources. I must say though, I thought I would get a whole lot more than these measly items. But anyway, it was all good. What I really needed to work towards was getting a grinder. And for that, I would need a whole lot of metal. The best route to take in order to farm up tons of metal was to get an Anki. It was decided then I had to go out in search of an Anki to tame. I quickly grabbed some kibble from the Morella tops and some berries from the feeding trough then set off towards the desert. It's a freaking forge! <laughs> Perfect! Just what we need. Are you that fast buddy? Ooh, yes you are. Woo -wee. Come on. Let's go, son. Yikes! Ah, oh, that was close. Okay, buddy, so you'd need just a regular kibble, okay. So, back at base, I picked up the regular kibble and teleported back to the Yankee to feed it. While waiting for the Yankee to tame up, I decided to tame a Dodicarus that I had spotted nearby. Strangely enough, this thing was already unconscious and it acted as a freaking grinder. It was exactly what I needed. I had to get this as well. I swapped out fence for I don't bite and proceeded to clear the area of all those dangerous dinos. Once that was done, I went ahead and got it the food it required and fed it to the Dodicarus. Give you all that. 
From there, I just waited for my diners to tame up. What else could I do? Okie dokes, so I've been pretty relaxed and not really thinking too much about the progression of this mod, but it turns out I had quite a few things to do. To get things moving, I decided to start breeding up an army of spinos for the next two days to take on some of the mini bosses. However, this time around, I had a plan to speed up the process. I previously spotted some of those prodigious Dimitrodons, and they had some neat abilities. I'm pretty sure that just having one of them would help me a ton. So I set off with Vince the man in search of these giant walking air conditioners. Ah, there's exactly what we need. The prodigious Dimitri Don. Jeez. That's a crazy high talker you have there, buddy. Will we be able to knock you out? Oh, I just wasted it. I hope you can't climb this. If you do, we're pretty much in big doo-doo. Wait, do I have tonics? I need to go back to base and get you some of the tonics. And you need uh, 21 prime. So, from there, I went ahead to grab the tonic and prime meat from the base. And set my course back to the Demetrodon to feed and tame it. Okay, so let's see if this thing works. I'm going to place you right here. Why do I have this weight here? What is that? Are you incubating your war? Look at that. Wait. I need to um automate new trap. There you go. Oh, the meeting on the enable. Meeting on. Oh, that's perfect. And the best part is these guys get their own saddles. So I don't have to craft any saddles. Look at that. Good job. Pete. That's what I'm going to name you. That's the first thing. Whatever comes to my mind. All right, Pete. While my spinos were doing their business, I decided to go out and check up on all the loot shops that I could find. We didn't get too lucky with loot, but at least we got a red drop and we have this yellow drop right here. When I returned to base after a day of loot hunting, to my surprise, I found out that these darn spinos were not breeding as expected. I'm not sure what was up with that, but I had only one spino egg to show for the entire day of breeding these punks. I guess I had to be close to them or something for it to work. Or maybe this is how long they take. Must be the high stamina stats then. It was day 28 and the first half of my conflagrant spino army was ready for their rounds. I wanted to take them out to level them up and prepare them for the first mini boss fight. That's what we set out to do for the next few days by simply destroying everything in sight. And boy, did we rack up those levels. While out leveling up my spinos, I came across something really cool. A conflagrant Bielzebufo. It turned out that it was actually a mobile chemistry bench. In order to tame it without any interruptions, I went with one of my spinos to clear the area of unwanted dinos. Once the area was somewhat secure, I pulled out my bowlers and tried to trap the little bugger. I must say, it was pretty fast, and trying to bowler it was a bit of a challenge, but eventually I managed to trap it and knock it out with my taming gear. Then I continued to secure the area and proceeded to collect some prime meat to tame the UBLs of Bufo. I also thought it was a good idea to farm up some more prime meat since I would be needing it to cook up some health tonics. Luckily, the area I was in had hundreds of dinos that could potentially give me the prime meat that I needed. So I stuck around and hunted down those dinos for prime and gained some extra levels for the spinos that needed to be leveled up. Back at base, I hopped on my Ankylosaurus and continued farming for the rest of the ingredients I needed to cook up the tonics that I wanted. I don't know if this is going to be a suicide mission or what. I am pretty scared to be honest. Not knowing what to expect is crazy. He's gonna lead the way. Let's just hope for the best. Oh, 
shiznit. What the freak was that? All right, boys. Are you ready? Let's do this. Go attack him. Wee. Holy smokes. We're not ready for this. We're not ready for this. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Oh, we're not ready for this, man. All of my freaking spinos are gone, man. But they did quite a good amount of damage on it. Though, after that sad defeat, I decided to head towards the Griffin Lair to upgrade my current flyer. I thought this was overdue. Over at Griffin Cove, I had spotted a level 812 Griffin that I wanted to tame. Trying to kite this creature away didn't really work. I then went with plan B, which was to try using grapple hooks to hopefully get a better line of sight and take some clear shots for taming. Unfortunately, that didn't work out so well the first time around. I then tried to reposition myself to get a better angle and what do you know it actually freaking worked i found a good spot to chill the best part was that the griffin was aggroed onto the morella tops giving me free reign to knock it out without much fuss sayonara sucker from there, I jumped down with my Spino and went ahead to clear the area of all the threats that were in the vicinity. This also included a freaking Reaper Queen. Luckily, I had those health tonics on me, which really helped while trying to tackle the Reaper. Yes! Oh my goodness. Once that was taken care of, I could finally check up on my Griffin and feed it the required food. Ah yes, day 31. On this day, I decided to venture out and take something huge that could help me with taking down some of the ancient dinos. I began by preparing the necessary items for the task and readied myself to tame this mysterious dino. Just when I reached said dino, there's a massive beast right there. We need instant kibble to tame that. The only way to get instant kibble is to take out, oh my freaking soul. We have to somehow take out the turkey with our spino. So, I arrived back at base, not knowing what to do next. The only other option left was to focus on beefing up my best spino to the max. I then decided to upgrade its saddle and took it out to level it up by destroying everything in sight. Okay, peeps, it turns out there was an easier way to obtain that golden kibble. I had been challenging a really tough mini boss, but in reality, there were more options to choose from. Take this ancient Rex, for example. 3 million. Let's see what you do. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is going down. I was preparing for the turkey and figured out this would be an easier fight. It truly is. Maybe I'll take a few of these out. I should have just tried this in the first place. Down to 600k. We let's go. Get knocked out, son. What are you doing? And then this creep of a wreck. It's time to rumble. Let's go. This is what I should have been doing in the first place. I wasted all those spinos for nothing. Well, we learn from our mistakes, huh? Hey, there we go. That's what we wanted to see. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. Where did we get this from? What the... Alrighty, this time I was ready to actually tame the Giga that I had spotted previously. There was nothing holding me back now. This is what we was waiting for. Let's see if we can do this. Plus we had an upgrade from our gear here, so let's just hope we don't get too close. I want to just uh, get his attention with just a normal trank dot. Hey, there we go. Hey, <laughs> oh freak. That didn't end so well. Oh, this is a good spot. Hey, yo, there we go. Okay, let's change it up a bit and see what kind of damage this does. Let's see what you do. Oh. Holy! That's like 70k. Oh no, you just missed that one. One more for the show. Hey yo, let's go. We gotta team it fast. There's a uh, something there. I also want to go out and uh, put down 
my ascension portal and now we shall have buses spawning in. Day 34. I decided to upgrade my flyer once again. Now that I had access to Golden Kibble, I aimed to tame a more powerful creature, and my target was none other than the Primal Griffin. When I reached the area where I had spotted the Griffin, I cleared out any of the unwanted dinos I could find and set up the taming pen I had prepared for this task. However, as I was about to switch flyers to lure the griffin into the trap, a repo queen suddenly jumped at me out of nowhere. I was startled and panicked at that moment, but managed to make a swift escape. Thing is, I had to deal with the reaper situation though. I couldn't have the reaper around while attempting to tame the griffin, so I summoned in the mighty I don't bite and charged at the reaper, taking it down in a matter of minutes. Afterward, I resumed my efforts to kite the griffin into my taming pen. However, another reaper appeared out of nowhere and started interfering with the griffin. Once again, I switched to I don't bite to take care of the issue, which we did without breaking a sweat. When it was all said and done, the griffin had disappeared for some weird reason. Yeah, on the brighter side, I did come across a cool red drop with some fantastic loot, might I add. Not to worry though, there was another primal griffin not too far from my current location. Once again, I found a suitable spot to set up my taming pen. I prepared the taming area and began the process of luring the griffin towards the trap. Unfortunately, luck was not on my side once again, as the griffin was mercilessly attacked and killed by some freaking irritating creatures. I was beyond frustrated at this point. Anyways, as they say, the third time's the charm. I persisted in my quest to tame a primal griffin. This time, I located one in the red woods and decided to use a net projectile to immobilize it. With the griffin unable to move, I quickly set up the taming trap I had on hand to prevent it from escaping or harming me. From there, things went pretty smoothly. I was able to knock the griffin unconscious and fed it the golden kibble to instantly tame this magnificent creature. Considering I was still waiting to find a good level male Giga on the map, I decided to tackle some of the other more immediate and pressing tasks. First, I headed over to my Dodicarus to grind up all that extra loot I had gathered during my adventures. I needed these resources for an important job. Afterward, it was time to hook up my newly tamed griffin with its very own primal saddle. At the same time, I visited the upgrade augment station to enhance the armor stats of the saddle. This upgrade would certainly help the griffin tank more damage. Once these tasks were completed, I focused on leveling up my primal griffin, which I named Richie. We went on a dino killing spree, doing some serious amounts of damage on unsuspecting creatures. By the time I had leveled up Richie as much as possible, he was pretty much a force to be reckoned with, boasting over 500k HP and doing over 100,000 damage a pop. It was simply insane! Ah yes, finally, I was able to spot a good leveled male Giga on the map and I just had to go out and tame it. Let's go. 298 Torpor. Ooh, 69 freaking K-Bowskis. Take down, son. I gotta go back to base to get you for the kibble. Let's just see if anything crazy is around here. Nothing of that sort. There you go, buddy. Hey, yo. Let's go. While I was in the taming mood, I decided to acquire a few more dinos to assist me back at base. To solve my charcoal production issues, I chose to tame the Conflagrant Mammoth because its special ability helped convert wood into charcoal. As for wood gathering, I selected the Glacial Woolly Rhino as it was apparently the best choice for farming wood. 
Well, you should have guessed by now what the plans were. I had a pair of mated glacial giggers, so you know what I did? I decided to take what my woolly rhino could do. Lol. But seriously, I needed to farm some wood for charcoal, and at the same time used the rhino's ability to collect all those stacks of wood. Then I took it over to my mammoth to test its ability to craft charcoal. And, of course, if you were wondering, I did start with breeding my Gigas as I needed a few good ones. On day 38, I continued breeding my Gigas as I needed a suitable pair for breeding. I also didn't want to waste the day, so I decided to go out and farm some metal with the Yankee. However, things got a bit complicated when I tried to clear the area with Richie. Ooh, ancient bricks, bro. Ooh, oh, 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 let's get out of here. Holy smokes. Oh, that, that's close. Oh, it's coming after me. Uh, <laughs> hey, there we go. Ooh, that was close. That was freaking close, man. <sighs> We're back into it, though. Now what the problem is? Here we go. Here we go. That's how we do it. Okay, back to collecting metal. Because uh, that's what your tail's supposed to do. Collect metal for us, buddy. On day 39, Mr. Pickles was up and ready for some action. I spent this time wiping the island of all its inhabitants with Mr. Pickles, all in the name of leveling him up as much as I could. This was definitely a game changer. Oh, this is just beautiful to watch. 48? 48 freaking levels to put in? Oh. Who dare challenges the mighty Mr. Pickles? I get it to 500k here. Oof, there we go. This is a bad, bad boy. The turkey hits freaking hard. Okay, it's now or never. Okay, okay. We got this. We got this. You did challenge me! Good night. <laughs> oh. oh, man, this is beauty. Where's my... Yeah, we got it. Oh, and we got more levels. Oh, this is going to be a beast. My reign of terror was not complete yet. I was thirsty for more action. Or should I say, Mr. Pickles was hungry for some more. We continued hunting diners around the desert biome for experience points. And while we were doing so, we came across something quite peculiar. A primeval Indominus Rex. Having been able to spot this creature meant that the Pugnacia portal was actually working. I now had world bosses roaming the lands. Unfortunately, for this dude, Mr. Pickles was a bit agitated by one of those corrupted wyverns and decided to go AWOL, destroying everything in sight, including that Indominus Rex. Rest in peace, little one. Anyways, I also took on another world or mini boss, the third trike. I mean, Mr. Pickles was pretty much overpowered for the most part, except for a few, and like we already had nothing better to do than to pick on defenseless little screeds, so we decided to take it on. Yeah, a whole freaking 43 million worth of a boss. You should know this was going to be one heck of a fight. What I didn't expect was that this strike spawned freaking doomed children minions. But those things caught me by surprise and I was sweating my butt off hoping not to lose Mr. Pickles. Fortunately, I had those health tonics with me and with them I was able to manage this battle without much of a fuss and everything seemed to be running smoothly. Well, that was until a freaking Kraken spawned in. Oh boy, now that really complicated things. However, the trike was almost done for and I really didn't want to leave until it was finished off. Against my better judgment, I stayed in the fight and tried my best to manage my HP with the health tonics while attempting to take down the third trike. It was absolute chaos with damage numbers, dinos flying everywhere and me trying to hold my ground. Thankfully though, 
I had a break this time and eventually took down my first third trike, hightailing it out of there with all those juicy loots. I was not up for another grueling and drawn out battle. No, not this time. Ah oh yes, it was day 41. With the loot I collected the previous day, I was able to craft some special kind of kibble that would allow me to tame prime evils. So, what do you think I was going to do, huh? Of course, I had to get me one of those bosses. And now, my friends, we shall try and knock this buddy out. It seems like it's stuck, so I just hope. Oof, it is stuck. Brilliant. Oh no, the freaking, freaking monkey free. Why are you going to do that, man? How you doing, buddy? Are you playing tag with me? Shot. Quick release. We're not doing much with the freaking... These arrows. 1.3. Oh yeah, here we go, buddy. Get knocked out. What? Doesn't look like you're sleeping. Let's test you out, buddy. Let's test you out. Richie! Fooey! 60! Hey, yo! Can you pick up this Rex? Oh, yeah, you can! Oh! Look at this! Brilliant! And then you smash him? Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now this day was fulfilling. I went out hunting some of the primevals that I was able to spot on the map for their energy. I'd soon be needing that to get a stronger dino of my own. I took down a manticore using a gas mask because I wasn't really sure if the manticore's attack would affect me or not. And I also collected some tonics from the loot that I managed to get from the kill. I then went ahead to take down more ancient rexes that stood in the way and grabbed all of those juicy golden kibbles. And I got more primeval energy from taking out another primeval Megapithecus. Alrighty, peeps. So, it was time to start prepping to build my main base. I've been putting this off for too long, to be honest. Anyways, I needed to get a few dinos that could help me with the build. Dinosaurs with a cementing paste ability. The only dinos I knew that could offer this ability were the Argentes. Over at the swamp, I had spotted a few that I could tame and knocked them out, feeding them the required food for them to tame up. I also decided to tame a Mega Shalom because because it could produce rare flowers over time. I would need those for cooking up more special tonics for the days ahead. But just then, for some weird reason, my primal griffin just died out of nowhere. Like an instant death kind of thing. I was so confused about this situation. Like, what just happened? Considering I lost my Richie to some freak accident, I decided that I had to replace him and get more. Possibly breeding up some backups just in case this would happen again. I ventured to where I was able to spot a few primal griffins and from there I made sure to clear the area of all dinos, except the griffins. For the first one, I used the same strategy as before, using the net gun to immobilize the creature, placing a few dino gates to prevent it from escaping, and knocking it out with my OP taming gear. Of course, I instantly tamed the griffin with the golden kibble. As for the second and third griffins, I just used the net gun to trap them, as the tranquilizers I was using did a crazy amount of torpor on these creatures. It was simply amazing. I then gave them a golden kibble each and bagged three primal griffins that day. Day 45! First things first, I needed to repair my pants. They got ripped out by something previously. Ah, there we go. Much better. Anyways, should I even mention what I was about to do? Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Of course I will. Well, I started breeding my primal griffins. What else would you expect? I don't know. Oh yeah, I also automated the process just so that I could get results quickly. Or at least that's what I thought. On the other hand, something strange happened. I'm not quite sure what I used to grind to get the resources that I got, but man, this was freaking mind-blowing. I mean, just look at all that metal and cementing paste. This was like heaven. Don't get me wrong, this was cool for me, but I just wanted to know what caused this so I could get more. Wouldn't you?
Over the next few days, I dedicated my time to working on my main base. Inspired by the building mods showcase, I decided to use the science fiction castle keeps and forts mod for this playthrough, aiming for that sci-fi aesthetic. What made this build even cooler was the perfect location I stumbled upon. It offered stunning views, a relatively flat surface for construction, and most importantly, it was elevated enough to protect me and my dinosaurs from the dangers of Pugnacia. Using my dinosaurs, I cleared the area of vegetation and any obstructive boulders, leaving a clean slate to create my vision. With the area cleared, I began laying the foundation to outline my design. This phase involved a lot of trial and error, as with most of my builds, I typically only have a picture to work from. I had to figure things out as I went along. By day 47, I was still refining some of my ideas. This project presented numerous challenges, but I persisted, and it seemed like I was making progress too. The following day, I managed to shape the base according to my vision, and it turned out to be quite impressive, with a futuristic vibe as well. I guess the structures contribute a lot to that, just on their own, but at least it turned out looking good. Here's the thing though, I wasn't done just yet. Oh yeah, the construction continued. I plan to add two more of these structures to my base and connect them to the main structure somehow. To complicate matters, Cams decided to build the base on the edge of a mountaintop, creating additional challenges. Finally on day 50, I completed my base build. And I must say, it turned out freaking amazing. The central, larger circular structure serves as the main area, flanked by two smaller structures that I can use for whatever I want, I guess. Each of these structures provided ample space and offers breathtaking views. I mean, one more could you ask for, right? Wrong. I can tell you what it does need. It needs a few finishing touches, which I think I should take care while I have some time on hand. So yeah, see ya! Alrighty, now that I have completed the base build and added in the finishing touches, which I must say turned out pretty neat, it was about time to move all of my items from the old base over into the new and more permanent base. Luckily, for my dinos, I had those soul balls, so most of them went in there to save space and it was the better option, really. As for the tons and tons of items accumulated over time, well, thankfully, Fifi was around and she had just over 62k weight, which was more than enough for the job. So, yeah, I just stashed everything I could into Fifi's inventory and that was about it. All that I had to do was say my goodbyes and move on to greener pastures. On day 52, I was still busy trying to unload and sort all of the items at the new base. There was just so much to move around and to be honest, I wasn't up for the task. It was tedious and I found myself in need of a break from all of this unnecessary work. So that's exactly what I plan to do for a bit. You see, I spotted these crazy looking defense mechanisms that I had with me and of course, I was quite the curious chap, so I decided to take a little look-see at what these could do. Let me put it close to these prontos. <laughs> See what happens to these guys. How you like me now, son? There you go. Are you not doing your your job? Okay, so apparently I can go into them. There's also some other thing here. I can't see much. Put this far away from me. I guess it puts dinos to sleep. Buddy! Are you working? The plant's not doing anything. Buddy, attack this fool. How you doing, buddy? Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. Ah, doing not that much damage. This thing, on the other hand, I have no idea what it's supposed to do. After messing around with those weird organic defensive systems, I went back to work, unloading and sorting out all of the items that I had brought over from the old base. So, done with the task of sorting out my base, I thought it would be a good idea to take out my new primal griffin, level it up and check out what that napalm bomb was all about. Yup, you bet. This time around, I had to test my giga against the mighty kraken. Let's go, Mr. Pickles. Let's go. Yes, it is hard. As long as this is the only thing we're fighting. There we go. This lights out for you, puppy. Hey, bro. Let's go. Let's put up this uh, Pagnesia force field. There we go. 
12s look game mighty fine. It's covering almost everything. Oh yeah, I like it. We got full cover. Day 54. I started with upgrading my Giga Saddles in the upgrade station and then set off to the desert biome to start leveling my other boss fighting Gigas. You're going to bed, buddy. Thank you very much. Never. I'm feeling a bit lucky. How's the turkey doing? Not so good today, huh? Oh, so cool. So cool. Okie dokie. Here's the thing. I had to put a halt on the Giga leveling gig just for a bit. You see, while I was out and about the previous day, I spotted one heck of a beauty that I wanted to tame. And today, my friends, was a day full of optimism. There it is. Holy freak. Where'd you come from, son? This way, come on. Come on, buddy. Let's try and kite it away. Maybe I should take it out too, because uh, we need that. Oh, this way. Come on, buddy. Hey, yo, let's go. Ah, uh, nope. What the freak? Hey. Let's get out of here. Ooh, invisibility. Yeah, 54k. Brilliant. Okay, so... Ooh! There you go, buddy. This lights up for you. Let's get this up to 500k. We're only getting like 5 damage done. 67! I would love to come out of this uh, camouflage thing. Oh, there we go. That works. <laughs> 67! Let's go! Over the next two days, I continued working on leveling my Gigas by pretty much wiping out just about everything in sight. Yep, we even took on a few primals, such as the Brute Mother and a few of those little Screed Manticles that happened to be in my path. Oh yeah, also this dude, Mr. Fister. I just spotted something. Mr. Fister. I don't know if I can take this guy on. Mm, let's try, let's try it. Ooh. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. Okay, okay, we're doing good. I can't see it's uh, HP. What? We're really doing any damage to him. This is gonna be a long fight. Eight, five melee left. We got 4.6. Let's go. Where are you, Mr. Vista? Where are you? Hey, Mr. Vista. KO'd. On day 58, I decided to prepare an area for the tech cloning chamber that I wanted to craft. I began by placing some foundations, thinking that the cloning chamber needed a structured foundation to snap onto. However, after meticulously building this area, I discovered that the cloning chamber could actually be placed directly on the ground. Yeah, shot for letting me know that. I just wasted 5 minutes of my freaking time. Anyways, there was another issue that I encountered. The need for an insane amount of element shards to operate the tech structure. Unfortunately, I had run out of elements. To acquire more elements, I decided to challenge some of the world's bosses, even though I wasn't quite certain if my Gigas could stand against them, especially the elemental titanosaur that had been spotted on the map. Although, I had to try it to find out. And I had those health tonics with me, which should be helpful. After a lengthy battle, we emerged victorious against our first elemental titan and we were extremely pumped up to take on more. That's exactly what we planned to do the next day. We continued to take down more bosses, completely annihilating the next target with the full force of my Giga army. And we totally demolished the bosses that followed, all while racking up as much element as possible. While out and about the previous day, I spotted this brute on my journeys and I thought it was high time I gave this a shot. Yep, there it is. Spine breaker. Be a part of that. Yeah, that one. That's the one. Oh. Well, it gives you some time to... to escape the ball of death. We need to be careful of that, man. Doing crazy damage here. I need more of a space. I don't know why I chose this one to fight, but uh, 
I'm guessing we will have to stick it for the long run. I don't know what I was thinking. Certainly not 100 million. There we go. The final bits. Hey, yo. Let's go. Alrighty, on day 61, I managed to obtain a full set of volcanic flak armor. Not only was it super OP and cool looking, but it also had its very own special buffs. It didn't stop there though, because by defeating the Spinebreaker, I received the Spinebreaker's Shredded Spine. Now, what that meant was that I could get my very own overpowered Spino. There were just a few more requirements I needed to meet. So, off I went in search of the energy of the primals required to summon the ultimate spinebreaker. First on the list was the primeval phoenix. Not too far from there was the dragon. And a few miles away I had spotted the primeval dodo wyvern. And to finish things off we took down the awesome and legendary dodo rex. But to be honest, they weren't much of a challenge for old Mr. Pickles here. Yeah? Now that I had all the requirements for my very own Spinebreaker, the last thing I needed to do was to sacrifice one of my own primeval creatures. Fortunately, I had previously tamed a Megapithecus and decided to use that for the sacrifice. Just then, the most magical thing happened. A Spinebreaker was born, complete with its very own saddle which I upgraded as much as it allowed. Once that was sorted out, I took my tame out for a test drive. I wanted to see what it could do, the damage it could inflict, and of course, level it up as much as possible. And not to mention, messing around with those world bosses. I just had to find out how fast this thing could take those bosses down. And man, it did not disappoint. What an absolute beast it was. Day 63, with my leveled up Spinebreaker, now called Sarah, I decided to trek and hunt down another Spinebreaker. You see, I had somewhat of a plan in the mix, but in order for me to try it out, well, I had to fight more of these monstrous dinos. Yep, it was another long and grueling battle of the beasts, but in the end, we were the last ones standing, and with pockets full of hard-earned spoils. Now, I just had to farm up all the primeval creatures again to obtain the required energy. By now, I sure hope you get the picture of what I was trying to do here. If not, then do mind you! Oh yeah, I also decided to mess up a muffer that just happened to be in my path. Like, how dare it look at me that way? I really didn't ask for it to be so inconsiderate. Nope. The last piece of the puzzle, if you remember from my first Spinebreaker tame, is that I needed a primeval creature for a sacrifice. I knew there was one, Rudy, but I really didn't want to give him up. So, I decided to go out and tame another primeval. In the desert, I came across a Dodorex. It was quite an easy tame, really. I tranked the creature from the back of Fifi and knocked it out cold within a few minutes. Then, I fed it the satiating nutriment and instantly tamed this bad boy. Back at base, I proceeded with the Spinebreaker sacrifice, and what do you know? I freaking summoned another female! Jeez! Not what I was looking for. Seems like I'd have to give this another shot sometime. In the distant future, that is. On day 66, I finally managed to get my PC back up and running again. For those of you who were unaware of the situation, I was able to resume recording. However, cams made a big doo-doo. I messed up with the recordings for the next couple of days. So yeah, I really hope that my editor can work his magic. Anyways, it had been about two weeks since my PC decided to go AWOL and I was trying to figure out what to do. I think we were planning to work on acquiring another Spinebreaker or something, but there were no primeval spawning on the map. So, it was on to plan B, which was to go after a Pugnacia mech. The only problem with this task was the outrageous number of resources required to craft the mech. Tens and thousands of them.
I had to find a mech blueprint with few requirements, although it was proving rather difficult to do so. On my quest to find a good blueprint for a mech, I remembered that I had seen a mech blueprint at the base previously. Yeah, I know you can't really see the blueprints clearly, but trust me, it was much better than the others. The only resource that had such a huge requirement was oil, and I thought it was still doable. All I had to do was set up a few oil pumps in the snow biome and, well, gather as much as I could using the mining drill. It works like a charm too. For the next couple of days, while waiting for the oil pumps to gather the required oil, I decided to chill back at the base and work on a few building projects I had in mind. What I wanted to do was add a landing pad for my flyers and another tech item I had in mind. For this, I chose the S Plus metal structures, as they provided me with the freedom to build however and wherever I wanted. And that was awesome! Obviously, I had no clue how to build this thing, I just had an idea and went with it. Surprisingly, it turned out great and I absolutely loved how it looked. But I wasn't done yet. I had another small project for the back of my base. That too turned out to be an awesome build. I mean, it's simple, but it looks amazing. Well, at least to me, that is. Alrighty peeps, done with my projects back at base, it was time to get back to the Spinebreaker quest. For those who don't know what I was up to, I had two female Spinebreakers, and I was looking to get a male Spinebreaker to try and breed them. You should know the process by now, I've done it like two times already, so let's cut to the chase, shall we? This meant that I had to hunt down those primevals once again. Or at least the ones I needed. Then, once again, I faced off against another wild spinebreaker for its shredded spine. And lastly, taming a primeval for the sacrifice. With all that darn effort I put into this quest, I sure hoped that I would finally get a mail. And guess what? It freaking messed me up again, peeps. Nah, I'm just messing with ya. I got the male spinebreaker I was looking for. You see, the whole idea behind trying to acquire these many spinebreakers was to actually breed them to get more powerful dinos. Well, guess what? It turned out you couldn't breed the darn spinebreakers. Just my freaking luck. Oh well, with this news, I was saddened and spent the rest of the day farming up some oil and adding a few more oil pumps into the mix. So, thing is, I wasn't going to give up on trying to breed my spinebreakers. I really didn't want to waste the time I spent trying to get these dinos. Fortunately, thanks to a King Daddy DMAC video, I found out that there was actually a way to breed them. Hmm, I wanted to try this out for myself. But first, I had to collect a whole bunch of pearls. Like 7.5k worth of pearls. The best part was, I found the perfect location to do just that. This pond or lake had thousands and thousands of pearls hidden down under. I just had to pluck them out. On day 76, I returned to the lake to farm the remaining pearls I needed. I had cleaned out the lake the previous day and had to wait for the pearls to respawn. Back at space, I proceeded to cook up the electronics I needed for a special kind of tech machine that could help me with my dilemma. Once I had all the required items, I crafted the S Plus Propagator. Believe it or not, this machine actually worked. It allowed me to breed my spine breakers and had a few awesome perks as well. I didn't know that something like this existed, but I had a spine breaker egg and it was freaking amazing. Over the next few days, I continued to breed a good set of spinebreakers to create even more powerful dinos. At the same time, I played around with the mutation perks that this machine had, giving me the options to improve on some of the stats a bit. By day 80, I had a really good line of spinebreakers that I could use. Of course, it wasn't the best, but for what it's worth, they had some sweet set of stats. Ah yes, my spinebreakers were finally ready to be set loose into the world of Pugnacia. I used these few days to take my little babies out and cut them a whole lot of juicy levels. 
which was achievable by simply wrecking everything in sight. Nothing could match up to these beauties, not a single creature. I mean, these dinos were so crazy that I was able to take on an elemental titanosaur. And I know that wasn't anything spectacular, but taking on the third trike at the same time, now that was. My next task was to obtain the endgame Mega Mech. To do so, I needed to craft or acquire three Pugnacia Mechs for use as a sacrifice, as well as collect all the boss tokens required to craft the Mega Mech's interface. Before even thinking about reaching that stage, I had the mammoth task of grinding up all the resources I required for the Pugnacia Mech's blueprint. So, I set off to do just that, farming as much oil and metal as I needed to get the job done. For days 85 and 86, the grind for the rest of the world boss trophies was on the go. First up was one of the most difficult ones, the Tempest. Doing some damage to us. Holy smokes. Just gotta be careful of it. I'm so scared to stay in its spot. Oh, can you tell your tornado to stop? Alright, we got you, man. Let's hit you with that uh, death ball. What are you doing with it? 20k? 21. Brilliant. I'm gonna stand here and fight. Fight to the death. Hopefully it's not mine. Man, this thing does some crazy damage to us. I mean, we've got... I don't know. Maybe... 1.5 melee. HP. Yeah, a tornado doesn't stun a chance, buddy. You gotta think of something else. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, there we go. The last few bites. Hey, there we go. We've got the Tempest RGB circuits. Awesome. We did it. Followed by another duel against the mighty Spinebreaker for its shredded spine. And the last item on my checklist was Mothra's. Huh? Yeah, I guess you heard right. Those balls are from Mother herself. True story. The next two days, I focused on getting my Pugnacia mech up and running. For that, I had to farm up the last of the requirements needed to craft the blueprint. Then back at base after farming for days for this blueprint and having all the items with me, I was finally able to craft the Pugnacia mech. This was quite a momentous day. Job well done, camps. But it wasn't really over just yet, peeps. You see, in order to get a really good mega mech with some added buffs, I would need to level up the Pugnacia mech as much as I could. So we set out to the desert to take just about anything and everything we could find. We started by working with the weaker prey at first, to get our levels up a tad bit. And then we took on some of the bigger game, which, thankfully, we were able to defeat. Alrighty, eh? it was about time that I actually started using that cloning chamber I had built a few moons ago. This was its moment to shine. I was able to get tons of element shards from the Pugnacia tech force field, and with those, I managed to clone my Pugnacia mech, not just once, but twice, giving me the items that I required for the mega mech sacrifice. Yeah, while I was at it, I decided to clone Zeus as well, as he was the best and my most favorite spinebreaker of them all. On day 90, I decided to check on that ascension portal and start taking on those bosses. I still hadn't realized that my recordings were messed up, so let's make it snappy, shall we? We need to get to the good footage. Here, I went on to take down the Ascendant Broodmother, which was quite the fight, but nothing we couldn't handle. And then it was the Battle of the Brutes as we faced off against the mighty Ascendant Megapithecus. Yeah, we pretty much pummeled him to the ground. We continued our assaults on the Ascendant bosses, this time taking on the ever so twitchy Ascendant Dragon, and it too met the same fate as the previous bosses. However, I did obtain quite a bountiful bag of loot, and among them were some really interesting artifacts that I just had to play around with for a while. I mean, who wouldn't, right? 
Then it was on to the Ascendant Mantica boss. The boss just before the final showdown. Unfortunately for this dude, he wasn't going to stick around to see that fight. It was quite a shame, really. So yeah, I couldn't go on further as we had low shading scheduled in the next five minutes. I was forced to log off. Rip. Day 93, yeah, it took me this long to finally realize that Cam's messed up and messed up big time. So uh, you can just imagine how I felt knowing that I couldn't do much but pray and hope it turns out alright. Anyways, it was time to face off against the final ascension boss, the Ascendant Hippo. We got this, this is gonna be the most difficult boss fight because this darn thing spawns in creatures. There we go. Let's, oh, let's go. This thing's gonna be uh, bad news for us, man. Oh, look at this bad boy right here. We need to deal crazy amounts of damage. Age stab. Oh my goodness me, no. What do we have fighting here? We just have the Tempest and the Ascendant Hippo itself. <laughs> what? is going on what i hope it doesn't spawn in is another spine breaker anything else will do i can't see what the freak i'm doing mothra is gone eight melee eight melee the ascended hippo is gone too son hey yo let's go let's go sonny we just did it! Oh wee! Beautiful! Beautiful! And another thing guys, I'm so sorry about the footage the previous couple of days. It was all due to the mess up that I had with my computer, so uh... Yeah, quite unfortunate. Alrighty peeps, so the moment of truth has arrived. I've been waiting so long for this. <laughs> Look at this! It's crazy. Let's try and get them as close as possible. I have no idea how this is going to work. If this is even going to work. Okay, so I have this. Here we go. Oh, she's next. Where'd you go? 24 mule. Holy smokes. Oh, <laughs> look at this bad boy. Holy freak. And smoke. It's huge. It's colossal. Like, how much damage do you do? <laughs> Seven mullet. Oh. I feel sorry for the last boss. I, I don't think it's it's going to to end well for that. Yeah. Smash seven melee. So, on day 95, I continued with the total destruction of Crystal Isles and its inhabitants, while at the same time leveling my Mega Mech. Not that it needed it anyway. I guess it was just so much fun hacking and slashing stuff with so much power. I felt invincible at that moment. Okay, so one more thing had to be acquired before I could take on the final, final boss. The thing is, the Mega Mech didn't have a saddle slot or a saddle, but there was a way for me to give it some type of protection. Now, for me to do that, well, I had to go on for one last farming spree, taking down those primeval creatures once again for their artifacts or trophies, whatever you call them. There was just one more piece to the puzzle, and unfortunately for this colossal freak of nature, he was the key and was standing in the way of me and total arc pugnacia dominance. So, of course, it just had to go, or more like smashed with my double troubled spine breaking crushing machines. Once that was taken care of, I decided to check up on my tech trank gear that I had received from my battles and went on to tame a primeval dodo rex that I had spotted on the map. I must say, it worked freaking amazing, doing an insane amount of torpor damage within a short period of time. What else can you ask for? Alrighty peeps, we're almost done, but I wanted to get a couple of things going. Um, we have these uh, scorched plate thingamabobsies that we can get a titanosaur trophy. It's sort of like a saddle for my Mega Mech because that thing 
takes crazy damage. That's so huge. I had to park it down here. So on this little platform. Ah, oh, freak. Did I just craft the wrong thing? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, wait, no, wait. I'm supposed to craft that. I almost, I almost, um, uh, crapped myself there. I don't really want to go and farm up all those things again. 25% less damage taken. That's what we need. Hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Just one more thing before uh, we get ready for our final fight. Okay, so we got the Dodorex that I just tamed. And we have the Sacrifice. Oh. Okay. What happened there? Where's my Dodorex? And where's the freaking... What just? Alrighty, peeps. It's almost uh, time to uh, take on the final bus. What I really want to do is just chill today. And uh, check out some of the things we hadn't checked before. Like uh, this hover sale. Yeah. And also this. You know. I never use this before. What can it do? Well, you can't punch that, can ya? What? You can see through walls? Alright. Sweet. Alright. Can you do anything else? Oh. We'll just leave it there. Hey, there we go. Beautiful. And before we say goodbye, let's take a drive on our hover sail, yeah? Or hover sh hover skiff. There we go. This thing is pretty difficult to control. It's been really cool chilling on this uh, Crystal Isles with Pugnacia. Got one more day. I'm just going to be cruising. Find a spot for me to battle my lost opponents. Right, are you guys ready for the ultimate fight? He yeah, let's go do this. We've got Lucifer himself ready to take him on. Yeah, oh jeez, 16k, bro. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, whoa, the freak is wrong with you, son. Let's go. 1.6 billion HP we got on this bad boy. Oh, we're doing decent amount of damage. Not too bad. What the freak? Ooh, gotta watch out for those flames. Gotta watch out for those things. Dodge the scams. Oh, that hurts. Wait, how much? Oh no. I think our spinos, uh, spine breakers will get wrecked by this dude. I think Zeus is only like 1-7. This dude will annihilate him. Although I should try, huh? Oh, oh, oh. There we go. That's not what we want. Not what we want. Okay, stay close. And do the dirty. Yeah! Let's go. Watch those spikes. Watch those spikes. You don't want to be caught in that. Woo-wee. Oh, freak. Stop slapping me, son. And here comes the minions. And there, go and there goes the minions. Night to night. There's a Kamehameha. Oh, freak. He got me. Oh, freak. Oh, there we go. Oh, we made it out of there. This gives us an opportunity to use our spine breakers. Let's see how they do against this thing. We'll give them a try, though. There we go. I don't have a good feeling about this, but... Uh, go after him! Take him down, son! Take him down! Oh, 
We're taking you down with a spino, bro. But, uh, never mind. I was wrecked. <laughs> it's almost time. There we go. 100 melee. He's going down. He's going down. No! F4 is down. We got our last spine breaker. Ah, spine breaker is gone. But there we go. One more. Slice him. This is for all the spine breakers. Yeah. There we go. Good night, little one. We'll see you in the afterlife. See ya.